back once again talking about the first Saturday in May with the Hennigan brothers who have made a, a wonderful film about about more than just horse racing. It's, it's about horses and it's about people. It's about the track. It's about winning and losing and, and loss. Uh, Barbaro, when you start covering this horse, first of all, how'd you discover this horse? Well, as Brad said, you know, the way the road to the Triple Crown is set up, it's it's a good way to think of it is kind of like the NCAA basketball tour tournament. It's not as regimented. There's not brackets and you advance, but there's races. And if you're good enough and you you think your horse is good enough, you go to the next race. So there's, there's set races and... Um, uh, well, after the first of the year, uh, we read this horse, Barbaro, in Florida, won the Tropical Park Derby at Calder Racetrack, and he won by a couple, you know, good amount of lengths. And we read this story about his trainer. His trainer, Michael Matz, was um, basically the Michael Jordan of equestrian riding. He won a silver medal at the uh, 96 Olympic Games in Atlanta, and we're just like... And he was he, also voted to carry the flag. The Dream Team was there, the original Dream Team. I think it was the original Dream Team in 96, and he was voted by all the athletes to carry the flag in the opening the ceremony of the Olympics. Yeah, so, right. yeah, and a pretty he, big honor. You know, we just we read a story about him. It was like, wow, he seems really interesting. That would, that's kind of our, you know, it wasn't like we saw that this horse was going. We're projecting this horse is going to be awesome. He was a good horse, but with a great the story, story attached with him. Yeah. And then we met him, and he was very nice. And you know, we put a mic on him every day. So we started that in like, uh, you know, the end of January of 2006. So I think we were ahead of the curve in, in terms bit, of anyone yeah. else like, following Barbro at that point. Yes. Well, what, and when you watch this horse and watch the, the story unfold, tell me a little bit about it. I guess, you know, the, the first, the one thing about, when someone asks us about, you know, the different horses and, you know, Barbro was one of the horses and John shot him more than, than I did, but uh, he was really inquisitive. You know, this is, I don't know if this is what you're asking, but I mean, he would come up and kind of sniff the camera lens and try to bite at the uh, at the mic on top of the camera. So he was- yeah, a little personality. Yeah, the horse he, he itself. did, he definitely and for had, people who haven't been around horses, they, they may not realize this, but horses do have, some of them more than others, a lot of personality. Absolutely, and the thing about Barbaro too, is I think it's important for people to realize like, he wasn't, his name was not up in lights back then. I mean, he was a, you know, mentioned in the top 10 of Kentucky Derby prospects, but people are mispronouncing his name, Barbero, and you know, and we didn't really know either. We're just like, this is a good horse, and... Um, we like Michael and, 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 and the Jacksons. Right, and his family, and yeah, the Jacksons, and Michael's daughter worked in the barn, too. That was a cool dynamic. Michelle Matz mm -hmm. was an exercise rider for her dad, and it's, Michael has uh, some young children as well, and they would come by the barn. We wanted to show like a whole kind of family lifestyle too with all the like w this kind of came out in editing is like we really have um well the theme the is children yeah you know it's like this is a lifestyle this isn't like this isn't the hollywood stereotype of like race fixing and mm -hmm. machine gun kelly and you know yeah. uh, scoundrels at the racetrack i mean that's this is a family a family endeavor and a passion absolutely and a, and a passion. And it's about love of horses yeah. like people this is their lives. And so as this horse develops this, this following, this reputation, this charisma, uh, and then suddenly tragedy, uh, tell me about that day. Well, after the Kentucky Derby, you know, we were following two horses, uh, two or three horses at that point that, you know, we thought when the Kentucky Derby ended, you know, we knew we had the winner, Barbaro, so even though the name of our film is The First Saturday in May, like, we got to keep going. Yeah. We got to keep shooting because. So you had originally planned to end with the Derby. Yes. We were going to take it there and see what happened. Was it surprising to you that Barbro came out of the Derby the way Barbro came out of the Derby? I don't think anybody expected him to win by how much he won by, yeah. but um, and to become a, a you know near legendary in the process. Right. We we know. knew that we knew that. He I was mean, good. we had a good idea that maybe one of our six horses might win because we had. Luckily, we had one of the three of the four favorites, you know, so we thought maybe one of our horses would win. It was and just the same way you bet years ago, probably, as well, right? You, you, you come right. The, the good <laughs> we ones. boxed a bunch of horses, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we bet it the wrong way, basically, and we came out with nothing. But, but get, you, your original question was, I'm sorry, we, we okay. kind of steered it the wrong way, was how did we feel at the Preakness? So in between the Derby and the Preakness, 
we were just like, we might be covering a triple crown winner. So we were really focused on that. So when the Preakness came, but we were still following another horse that we had in there. Brother Derek. Right, because maybe they were going to be rivals and this was going to be an affirmed Ali Dar or a Michael Jordan, excuse me, a Larry Bird, Magic Johnson type scenario. Like, right. y you don't know what's going to happen. So we're still trying to cover all angles. And I'm, I'm getting the chills, actually, when I say this. Like, the day in, in Baltimore was like, I'll never forget it. It was, it was really horrible. It was like there was a, a were you cloud. Shooting, were you shooting the film at the time? Oh, I, we were at the Preakness. Yeah. Yes, we were shooting. I was having to be shooting the trainer of Brother yeah. Derek. Mm -hmm. And he was watching, you know, watching the race. And obviously, he has a vested interest and wants to win, sure. win the race because he had a bad trip during the Kentucky Derby. And he was forced wide around the whole track. So... He felt that, you know, maybe if I'm running, I get a better trip and I run on the inside, I can I can take this thing. And um, I just remember, I'm not watching the race. I'm, I'm shooting him watching the race. And uh, I could hear a gasp and, you know, everything kind of go quiet. And, you know, he was like, oh, I don't, I don't even care. I don't want to watch the race anymore. You know, it, it was eerie. I mean, this was the trainer of another a rival horse. And he, you know, this is how much these guys care about horses. Like, yeah. you know, this is a... It's a big race, and it's a lot of money. I didn't know what was going on at first. I was kind of trapped on the infield. I knew he got hurt, but I didn't know to what extent. So I, like, hustled back to the barn, and I kind of, like, we were all picking up information. We got back there, and we saw the ambulances, and I saw Michael's daughter crying, and I just put my camera down. I was just, just kind of in a daze just because, well, we, we, we you know, we really... Game, uh, we had a friendship with these people right. too, and you didn't want to be exploitative, and uh, and you know. But so. did you have any idea at that time that that the country would react the way it did? No, absolutely no. not. The the craziest thing that I heard was that horse was immediately taken from Baltimore up to uh, New Bolton uh, Veterinary Center in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. It's probably about an hour and a half from there. On 95, people had made signs on the overpass saying, like, get well, Barbara. They're mm. holding up. Yeah. You know, that, I mean, how they knew the horse, you know. So it, it happened, like, that quickly. I want to uh, take a break again, come back in a couple of moments, talk about uh, the struggle for life at New Bolton, and, and also back up and talk about the pageant that is the Derby itself, uh, which happens, uh, as your film is titled, the, the first Saturday in May, and some of the strange and uh, entertaining characters that play uh, bit parts in the film. So we'll be back in just a moment. Don't go away.